Today's video is for my Gen Xers out there considering starting a business. No, you're not crazy, and here's how to get started. Hi, I'm Niall Harris, a life strategist, business consultant, and speaker working with transitioning and growing entrepreneurs and professionals to pursue their passion with a plan by getting clarity, setting goals, and getting things done. Before we get started, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel and turn on the alerts. Also, you can follow me at I am Niall Harris on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also find me on LinkedIn at Niall Harris. Now, Gen Xers, and I'm also talking to my Zennials out there. And Zennials are that group of millennials who identify with Gen Xers but are born millennials. Gen Xers, you might be thinking right now about starting a business of your own or starting a side hustle or transitioning that side hustle into your main hustle and you're not crazy right now gallup says that 75 percent of people quit their jobs because of their managers and surveys or research shows that the group most likely to start their own business is over the age of 35. The group most likely to be successful 10 years are the Gen Xers. So you're not crazy, research supports you. But also in this point of time, Gen Xers are in that midlife stage. And there's been a lot of frustration because right, we're kind of the, the forgotten generation, if you will. And we kind of got squeezed out of the workplace and there's a lot of frustration uh, for Gen Xers in the workplace who feel that they haven't been developed or feel that they've been overlooked when it comes to development or when it came time for promotions. And they are also looking to supplement their incomes. And so they have been doing side hustles because thanks to the millennials, the rule breakers, there is a lot more opportunity because of the internet. It provides a lot more ability to participate in the gig economy. Now the gig economy is basically just that, going from gig to gig, uh, and hopefully you, you can build a business where you have some stable clients or some bigger clients, but you might also have smaller gigs. So places like upwork.com, for example, are places where you can go and get hired as a freelancer contractor if you want to supplement your income. Now, there are a lot of people who've been able to build so much business via these gig economy um, platforms that they've taken to doing it full time and or have become coaches or consultants or started just honestly different businesses. I know somebody who started a, um, a wine business. So anyway, you're not crazy. Actually, statistically speaking, you're probably right on track. And Gen X is positioned very well. We're positioned that as boomers in the workplace retire more and more to rise up into leadership roles, we're also positioned with uh, technology, wisdom, and experience to go out on our own. Um, but how do you get started, right? It's really easy for me to sit here on camera and say, go ahead, get started. Entrepreneurship isn't easy. Having your own business isn't easy. There's a lot of hard work and you might not know exactly where to get started. And so I want to talk, give you just five points, five key points or things that you could do to take action now to get started with starting your own business or side hustle and then preparing that side hustle to be your main hustle if that's what you want. Now, let me caveat this. If you like working a nine to five, that's that's wonderful. It, it, there's this notion right now that everybody has to be an entrepreneur. You're only winning if you're doing your own thing. And that's just simply not true. I got started with a side hustle years ago because first of all, I didn't feel that I was being developed in my own role at my own company and I wasn't being given opportunities to create and develop new skill sets. And I use it as a way to develop skill sets, but also unleash some creativity that I wasn't able to do at work. So I started a blog and I learned how to blog 
from scratch, like starting a, a website and building that website and learning how to blog and doing ads and uh, social media. And so it's something that I taught myself over time. And then I also uh, had gotten laid off at one point and that's when I had started consulting. Uh, and so I just carried those things through and built that skill up and then eventually do it now i do it full time uh, as a consultant and a coach and i've learned taught myself a lot about building websites how to make videos uh, and how to do social media digital marketing google analytics uh, so i've learned all of that taught myself all of that it's just a good creative outlet uh, for something if you need it but that's how I got started. It wasn't a plan for me. It wasn't something I was like, I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to do this on my own. It was something that filled a gap that I think a lot of Gen Xers are feeling. And uh, then eventually it paved the way for me to, you know, kind of go out into the world and see what I wanted to do. But it wasn't a plan. And a lot of entrepreneurs will tell you, hey, this wasn't my plan, but I got laid off or things at work weren't going well. And so I had to fall on plan B and I had to bet on myself. And you have a lot of people who like, hey, I wanted to pay off a school loan, so I started this side hustle, or I want I do my side hustle to pay for my vacations. It's okay, whatever works for you is absolutely okay. So don't let these memes on social media or these books or anything tell you that what you want to do isn't right. If you don't want to be an entrepreneur, that's perfectly fine. If you want to work your nine to five because you like what you do, because I liked what I did at the time um, that I had a side hustle, I really did. And I wouldn't be opposed to going back to full time. Um, but it, again, what works for you works for you. So here are the five things that you can do to take action now, because really it's going to be um, the the things that you do. You, you have to take action and you can't uh, just do one thing or do something and think, oh, I'm, I'm going to hit it big because everybody that you think hit it big or was an overnight success, it took them 10 years to get there or five years to get there or three years to get there. So luckily, I started back in 2011, getting there and building the foundation, getting equipment uh, here and there, microphones, cameras, lights, uh, and I built that up over the years. Um, so anyway, let's get started. The five things you can do to take action now if you want to start your own business, uh, it doesn't, it could be any business, by the way, online in a brick and mortar shop. Um, or if you want to get started with a side hustle with the intention, maybe potentially of turning that side hustle into a main hustle. And there were some key things that I did with my side hustle, even though I didn't think that it would become a main hustle one day, there were some key things that I did that set me up that when I wanted to flip that switch were already there. And, and one of those things was creating an LLC. And here we go. Number one, invest in quality learning. Now there are tons and tons of free information and videos like this one out on the internet and it's great information, but you are going to have to invest time and resources into doing good quality learning, uh, good online course, seminars, uh, reading books, and you know look to spend somewhere between 300 or a thousand dollars three thousand dollars i when i wasn't getting developed at my own job i spent probably i i won't say how much i spent but it was in the thousands to do my own professional development i used to spend a week every summer in um, this camp where we learned different leadership styles and it was experiential learning. So we were outside and we would do different tasks or uh, obstacle courses or things like that. So I invested my own money out of my pocket because my company wouldn't. And it, it was amazing because my peers, whenever I would come back from this camp, would say, my, you know, I noticed the difference. You're always different. You're always improving can I be part of that camp? How do you do it? Um, versus the opportunities that were being offered, which I really felt were kind of rubber stamp opportunities anyway, because we were just spending, um, frankly, we we're spending all day, a week or months doing PowerPoint presentations and not necessarily learning what it meant to be a leader and getting out there and actually leading. Um, and one of the 
most impactful activities we did was that for one of these camps or one of these leadership camps we were split up into teams it's probably about a thousand participants and we were split up into teams of five in my team we were the only all woman team and for this week we had to go and do different tasks and after every task the leader changed and so it was uh really cool in that we got to try different tasks and, and be the leader and be the follower so it wasn't only about being the leader it was also learning about how to be a good follower and uh, one of the days we basically did paintball all day and each person rotated who they were who was the leader and what I learned from that activity is you you have to be able to lead confidently in times of crisis. Um, and these aren't things that we're going to learn in the classroom. They're not shooting paintball <laughs> at you in a classroom uh, in the corporate in the corporate setting. So invest my point is invest in quality learning, find out where that quality learning is. And I will say I've invested time and money in courses and people that were not good. There are things now like trustpilot.com where you can look for reviews on different people and different coaches that didn't exist early on. So now I definitely go and I research folks first before I sign up for any course or seminar. And because I'm looking for quality, I'm looking for information that I can implement and take back and take action on. And there are some folks where, you know, they'll charge, you know, three, four, five, six thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, and it's like 80% mindset, which is important, but then 20% tactical. And you really need both. And I would argue that you need tactical because if you get your mindset right, but you don't know what to do next, it can be very frustrating. And then it sets you back in your mindset. So invest in quality learning. It is absolutely important. Self-education will make you a fortune. The next thing you need to do, number two, is know that you can market for free. That's the good news. The bad news is you can market for free. When you're getting started, you can get on social media and Twitter, Facebook, whatever, post. You need to be doing that. You need to, to get your social media footprint. It is not necessarily something that's fun to do. Uh, getting videos together, getting posts together, writing blog posts. It's not something that's fun to do, but this is the digital age. And even though it's crowded out there you still need to get that footprint because when you're talking to clients or maybe you're pitching to speak or whatever your um whatever your expertise is that you want to put out there people are going to want to see that you have a presence on social media it doesn't have to be you don't need millions of followers that's not what i'm talking about you want a nice engaged base and it's going to take you some time to build that the bad part about marketing being free is that you know, at a base level, everyone has access to it. And that means that the field is full and you're going to have to trial and error on ways to get yourself above the crowd or distinguish yourself or make yourself more unique. And then at some point you are going to have to invest dollars to get in front of your, your audience. And whether that's Facebook ads or Google ads or ads on YouTube, whatever it is, at some point you will have to invest dollars to be able to reach the audience that you are trying to reach but build the base first build what your brand is build what you want things to look like how you want what you want your voice to be before you start investing the dollars because in, if you take the time to figure out what kind of resonates and, and works with folks when it comes time to make that investment in getting and amplifying your voice and amplifying your message and brand, you will be pretty much locked into what you want that to look like. Number three, this is going to seem kind of obvious. You'd be surprised though how many people skip this step. If you make the money, you must count the money. Again, I know that sounds pretty obvious, but I'm actually going to be teaching about this pretty soon is people who start small businesses, they might do arts and crafts or they do the coaching or whatever they collect money, but they're not 
doing what they need to do on the back end to count that money. They don't have spreadsheets. They're not tracking their revenue streams. They're not tracking their expenses. You really actually need to be tracking those expenses because a lot of those tax deductions go missed because people aren't taking an effort or making the effort to track their expenses and assets and where they put their money. And if you do invest in, in training, um, in learning and continuing education, it is somewhat tax, tax free or um, a tax reduction or a tax impact, but that's been changing lately. So please, you know, um, consult with an accountant on what you can and cannot deduct. My point is, treat your business like a business have a spreadsheet and it's a simple spreadsheet uh, money in money out and what you spend it on track those receipts have that organized every month close out the month there are plenty of free uh, tools to do this um, you don't really need anything fancy if you have microsoft excel a google sheet basically just you know set that up and track that week over week, month over month, and visit it every quarter and set goals for yourself. Number four, birds of a feather flock together. And what I mean is find people who are doing what you want to do or who already are where you want to be. If you will surround yourself with people who don't have the same philosophy or mindset as you, that's where you're going to stay. And there's a famous quote, and, I, and all of a sudden I can't remember who said it, but you know, if you show me the five people you hang around or the last few books that you read or basically the environment in which you keep yourself in is as far as you're going to go. And at one point in my life, and this was obviously somewhat unintentional, but I think mindset wise, this is why it happened. Because when you set intention for yourself or you set a goal or a vision for yourself, your brain will start making micro decisions that you're not even aware of that move you toward your goal or move you towards your desired outcome. So at one point I found most of my friend base or a lot of the people that I was connected to or, or networking with were entrepreneurs. They were either nine to fivers plus a side hustle, moving toward making that side hustle their main hustle, or they had made the jump and they were full on in business. And I realized, wow, 80% of the people I'm surrounding myself with all of a sudden are the same as me and they're trying to do the same as me. And so you can push each other, you can learn from each other, you can encourage each other. Find your base and learn uh, and then you can all learn together go in you can might be able to even go in and invest in some of that quality learning that i talked about a little bit earlier uh number five and i think this is really important maybe i should have started with it but these are in no particular order by the way i probably should have mentioned that but number five which should probably be number one um is to gain clarity about your mission and vision where is it that you want to go and i uh, first start with why by simon sinek is a, is a great read if you haven't read it but it basically tells you to understand why what is the core reason what is the purpose what is your passion why are you pursuing this particular avenue for yourself is it to be debt free is it to give your family opportunities that you didn't have growing up uh, is it because you want to change the world uh, have a very crisp and crystal clear understanding of your why, your your clarity for what you want to do and where you are trying to go. What is your mission? What is your vision? Where are you trying to go? What does your world look like when you achieve your goal? One of my favorite vision statements is St. Jude's Children's Hospital, and it's very simple and elegant. And they their vision is a world where no child dies of cancer. Now, that is a, a big hairy goal, and, but that's the vision. That's what the world looks like when their work has been successful, when they have achieved their, their goals and their missions. And so everything that they do 
aligns to that. And that's why it's important to know what your, your clarity, your, your vision, your mission is because your strategy and your goals are going to align to that. You don't want to do anything that does not line up with what you're trying to accomplish. That's how people get out of, out of sync and out of whack and companies sort of start to spiral out of control and good to great by Jim Collins talks about this a lot. And I will put these uh, links down in the comments for you. Uh, but this book also talks about, you know, being focused and staying in line with what you're trying to accomplish. And a, and a great example of a company that does this is Southwest. They're very simple. They want to provide a great customer experience at low prices and everything they do aligns to that. And their primary strategy is to keep their operating costs low. They keep their operating costs low by doing things like not having a hub and spoke system. So hub and spoke system, think of Delta. They are based in Atlanta and then they fly you to places where there are other hubs. So uh, Delta, um, Atlanta, LA, uh, I forget where Delta hubs are, but you get the point. And then they fly you to your final destination. So a lot of times you're probably connecting through Delta because it's hub and spoke. Now, what Southwest does for all intents and purposes is they kind of lease gates at different airports. And even though you are probably connecting um, at Southwest, uh, they they also have direct flights as well because they, they fly basically a pattern that lines with where their customers want to go. And so because they, they're not investing in a lot of infrastructure the way Delta does, they keep that operating cost low. They don't provide meals on the planes, just snacks. They do um, quick turnarounds at the gate. So you know how you can pick any seat on Southwest. They do very quick turnarounds because they want to keep things moving inside when they strategize and they set goals, everything aligns to that from their employee benefits to how they plan for um, flights, flight paths, flight schedules, all that. Everything aligns to providing a great customer experience at the lowest price possible. Uh, no baggage fees on the first bag, uh, things like that. So that's what you have to think about. That's why it's so important to get clear on your why, your vision, your mission, because everything that comes after that is going to support that vision. Um, because if, and, and, and where it gets real easy is when you get to the point of, you know, setting goals and when you get to the point of getting things done, anything that does not support the strategy, anything that does not support that vision and achieving that vision is an automatic no. It becomes very simple. And one of the best descriptions of strategy is deciding you know, who you do and do not wanna be, what you will and what you will not do. And so if it doesn't get you to your end goal, it might be really cool, uh, but you're going to avoid it. So that's it. So Gen Xers and Xennials, this also applies to you because you're very close to the same point um, as, as uh, Gen Xers are. Gen Xers are, are probably in that stage where they want to start a business. Millennials as a group are more likely to start a business. And by 20, I think by 2027, uh, more than half of the workforce is going to be freelance and contractor more than half. Get on the front end of this wave, create your own um, infrastructure. Uh, at some point, I'll also talk about, you know, how do you create your back end, your infrastructure, things like that, your systems uh, to support that. But you're not crazy, Gen Xers. You're really not. Uh, we've been sort of overlooked. Uh, we've been sandwiched in between two generations that frankly are constantly sort of throwing bombs at one another. Gen Z is coming up and Gen Zers are the most likely demographic, by the way, to do participate in the gig economy, to be freelancers and contractors. So this is uh, the way of the workforce here in the US. And so corporations are really having to fight to retain talent because if this talent can go out into the workforce, or, or I'm sorry, into this gig economy and create their own, um, create their own businesses, they're gonna have a hard time keeping them there. So anyway, so that's it. Those are the five things 
that you need to do and focus on if you are interested in creating a side hustle, turning your side hustle into a main hustle.